<clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. This is the Narada Pro RBA base that we're gonna be building today. This is the new inbox Narada Pro AIO that we're gonna be putting it in. This is the Narada Pro that I've been using since roughly Vapor Expo UK. When was that, October last year? It has been a very solid, very reliable, nice little AIO banger. After a few months, that's what the button looks like on mine. And I guess, I don't know, maybe that falls under just the general wear and tear, although I've never had a button or anything like that with, like, with all the paint come off of it. But it's not really about this, although we'll be talking about it in a little bit. It's really about this. I've been on a little bit of an RBA base kick. You know, we did that Lost Vape Quest not too long ago, as well as that As Vape Hitta. So I'm interested to see how this RBA base goes and how easy it is to build. They all seem to be, uh, you know, a little bit different. Some are more fiddly than others. Let's see what we got going in here. One tiny black screwdriver. One RBA base. Okay, there's some spare O-rings and some spare screws. I don't know why the O-rings are loose. It looks like this package didn't get sealed properly. Hi, what up quality control? And one other tiny O-ring that you definitely probably don't want to lose. Ah, I see now that this little plastic adapter guy is so that you can dry fire your coils. Smart, nice, looks to be a fairly small, small little deck in there. There's a place for your wicks right there with spots that lead out to the tank. Airflow through the middle. Truly and honestly, feels a little K-funny, you know? There's gonna be your connections on the bottom. All right, cool. So let's see what we can put in here. I got some of these one ohm coil turd mouth to lungs. Uh, let's try it. I don't, I feel like we can't back these screws out too far. Maybe something like that should be okay. Even just setting it in there kind of fits in there real nice. I had to take the screws as far as they could out and then I screwed them in like one turn, one thread. That gave me enough room to drop this Clapton in here. Two and a half millimeters. So it is, uh, whew, it's a little bit of a tight fit. I'm gonna get these leads secured down just a little. I don't wanna crank them all the way down because we're gonna adjust that coil a little bit, you know, back and forth, make sure it's nice and centered over the airflow. All that good stuff. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say that I nailed it on the first try, but boosh, it's centered as hell. I'm going to straighten it up, but that's basically the idea right there. Kind of centered right over the airflow, clipped off one of the leads. You just take your clippers, cut off these leads. And if we want to glow it, we put it in here. The tab kind of goes towards the back where you would click it in. We're going to pop this on the Narada Pro just to glow it, get the ohm, see what's going on. It's supposed to be one ohm reading 0.97 without dry firing. Not bad. going to turn this down real low to like, you know, seven watts to dry fire it. All I ever do to get coils glowing evenly is to pulse the power in such a manner as this and strum. Pulse and strum. And then in literally no time at all, glowing perfectly evenly, final resistance check, 1.12, rad. And while I've got it in this little, uh, you know, RBA base adapter for glowing, I'm just gonna go ahead and wick it. Now seems like the best time. Well, the good news is I got it wicked and I got it wicked, I juiced it, I put it in the tank and I vaped it a few times just to see how the wicking was. Turns out I had far too much cotton in there and I don't want to deal with that. So we emptied the tank. I got the deck back out. We're going to trim these wicks down. I want the wick to just sit in that catch cup, like right above it, kind of filling it, but not going down it. If that makes any sense at all. Just kind of in that catch cup, but without clogging it up. That looks already and feels much better. So let's get this chimney back on. We got the tank right here. Tab goes towards the back towards the fill port. We're gonna fill it up again. All right, well now that is a fully built and wicked and filled and then emptied and then re-wicked and then refilled Narada Pro RBA base. Let's get it in here, 0.11 at 12 watts, Narada Pro. Let's get back out to normal view and let's actually vape it now. Fully built, fully wicked, fully juiced up Narada Pro RBA base here in the Narada Pro, which in and of itself, it's a pretty cool little AIO. Small little design, clicky button. You adjust the wattage by spinning the wheel. You can lock the wheel so it doesn't adjust your wattage as well, which I find really helpful. The AFC for your pod is this little notch up here that you slide up and down. Since I was hoping that this would be a really good mouth to lung, we're gonna slide this down and restrict the airflow off as far as we can. Features coils came out perfectly to a 1.2 ohm resistance. I have this set at about 
11 watts. I experimented up to like 12 and 13 watts, but I found it to be a little, just a little too much. I think the only reason it was a little too much is because I still haven't completely perfectly dialed in the wicking for this RBA base. The first time I wicked it up, the wicks were far too long. And the second time I snipped them, I think I needed to thin them out just a hair. This is something I've been saying for years and years in regards to rebuildables like RTAs, but it's always a little bit of like a balancing act, right? Between your juice viscosity and your coil diameter and how much cotton you're putting in there. They all kind of need to work harmoniously in order to provide you that really good vape. Too much cotton, it's gonna go dry. Too little cotton, it's gonna get floody or gurgly or leaky. But even the way that I have it wicked right now, it's still wicking real well. It's given me some pretty nice flavor and even with the airflow little slider all the way down, it's a pretty nice mouth to lung. It's a little bit more open of a mouth to lung, which I actually really like. I don't like it super, super tight. So this is kind of right up my alley for a mouth to lung. Vaping really well and mostly what I love about now that I can put fused Clapton's inside of these tiny, tiny, tiny little RBA bases is now these tiny, tiny little AIOs. This little RBA base can give me that crackling coil sensation that I desire in a vape. That's not something you get very often in an AIO or a pod type of device. It's vaping nice, the airflow's nice, the flavor's real good. Other than this RBA base, which is definitely my preferred way to vape this, the mesh coil heads are a strong second place. Even being a mouth to lung guy, I still prefer the mesh coil heads with the airflow closed down. That's the mouth to lung that I kind of desire. Like I said, a little bit more open. The RBA base itself is real easy to build. Like I said, it's K-funny. You kind of just set your leads down, screw them down, clip them, cotton, so let's try some restricted lung. So we're gonna take this airflow adjustment and slide it all the way up, open it all the way up. It's not a huge difference. It's not, you know, this night and day difference. It's a little bit more open, which lends itself a little bit more to like that, you know, restricted lung. And with the crackle included, it's a very nice vape. Really very nice vape. There's a lot of these out on the market. You know, these AIO pod kind of all in one. Sometimes they have an RBA base, sometimes they don't. They generally all use coil heads. They're generally all kind of the same boxy internal battery. Here's your pod, it's usually around four mils. Here's your airflow adjustment. Here's your wattage control. They all kind of do the same thing and they all, eh, kind of vape the same way. Some slight little subtle differences between them as far as like airflow goes and maybe this one's a little bit more restricted or this one's a little bit more open or this one's a little bit more tight for the mouth to lung. And as much as I am enjoying this Narada Pro, I've been enjoying this Narada Pro, and even as much as I like this RBA base with that crackly Clapton in there, it's not really some big revolutionary thing, you know? It's not leaps and bounds better than any other AIO on the market. It, but it's a very good, satisfying all-in-one. If you're a smoker looking to transition from combustibles, I think this would be a great way to go. I'm glad they make RBA bases for a lot of these pods because it gives you something to grow into. If you arrive at this straight from cigarettes, you're gonna be able to just vape the coil heads, and then if you're feeling, you know, feeling frisky, get in there with that RBA base, start building it yourself. You have some, uh, you have some room to kind of grow with it a little bit. Nice, very nice. It's a fun, cool, compact, little dope looking AIO, Aug Vape, Vaporizzo out of the UK. You wanna play the Aliens game? First, Vape Budget Hands. So Vape Budget Hands, you're gonna need your Vape Budget Hands if you wanna check out the Narada Pro kit and the RBA base? Uh, no, or maybe, I don't know, maybe a little bit. The Narada Pro kit itself is around 40 bucks, 35 to 40 bucks across the internet. The RBA base, if you wanna get into that rebuilding base, it's gonna be an extra like 10 bucks on top of it. So worst case scenario, you're looking at about 50 bucks for the kit and the RBA base together. So not crazy vape budget hands, but still some, we will we'll call it vape budget concerns, you know? And if we were to play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they came and take everything I have, I have nothing left to vape, is the Narada Pro with an RBA base, something I'm gonna seek out and buy right away. Here's the thing, 
I'm enjoying the vape that I get from this now. It's not my ideal restricted lung and it's not my ideal mouth to lung, but it gives me some nice flavor, gives me some nice crackle, and it's a cool little AIO to use. It's just not at, you know, the top of my pod AIO hierarchy list. As for what's at the top of that list, probably still like the Asvape Hitta right now. I'll put a link down in the description to my video for that. But anyway, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. You know, links aren't allowed in the description anymore, so you're gonna have to use your Google Foo, but it is what it is. Narada Pro, RDA, RBA rather, it's not an RDA. That's silly. RBA base, build it, wick it, vape it like a little AIO. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, no matter what anybody tells you, yeah, keep on vaping.